This video demonstrates a resection of a right thigh leiomyosarcoma with reconstruction of the femoral vessels. The patient is a 68-year-old man who initially presented with a progressive thigh mass over the last year. An ultrasound guided biopsy confirmed a low-grade leiomyosarcoma. CT imaging was performed which demonstrated a mass encircling the superficial femoral artery. The mass appeared to be adjacent to the profunda artery with uncertain involvement. The patient underwent neoadjuvant radiation with a goal to reduce the size of the mass in preparation for surgical resection. The patient was also noted to have a right common femoral vein deep venous thrombosis and therefore prior to the resection a temporary IVC filter was placed for prophylaxis. This is a coronal view of the mass. The plan was to take the patient to the operating room for an M-block resection and plan reconstruction of the superficial femoral artery with autogenous conduits. The patient was taken to the operating room after wire guidance was established and marked externally. An elliptical incision was created with wide margins. The section was carried through the subcutaneous tissue and fascia with electrocautery. The greater saphenous vein was encountered first and dissected free proximally and distally. We elected not to use ipsilateral saphenous vein for planned superficial femoral artery reconstruction due to the recent radiation therapy to the region. The saphenous vein was ligated proximal and distal with silk ties. Following this, the common femoral artery was identified and encircled with a silastic loop. Next, the Doppler was used to identify the superficial femoral artery in the thigh distal to the mass. Dissection was carried medial to the sartorius muscle, and the superficial femoral artery and femoral vein were identified and encircled with silastic loops. Once vascular control was obtained, a flap on the lateral edge was created and the mass was resected and blocked. Dissection was carried through the investing fascia of the sartorius muscle, and the sartorius muscle was cauterized and resected and blocked using a ligature electrocautery device. During lateral dissection, a profunda branch was identified deep to the muscle and dissection was carried cephalad until the main profunda artery was identified at the femoral bifurcation. At this point, we elected to preserve the profunda artery as it was not incorporated into the mass. The mass was dissected free medially as well. Following this, the contralateral greater saphenous vein was harvested using skip incisions. We turn our attention back to the right thigh. The distal femoral vein was ligated with silk ties. Proximal femoral vein was ligated with silk ties distally and clamped proximal. The proximal femoral vein was oversewn with a running proline stitch. We took care to preserve the deep femoral vein as this was the remaining outflow of the right lower extremity. A branch of the profunda artery entering the mass was ligated with silk ties as well. The superficial femoral artery and vein were transected distal, and the mass was resected and blocked with ligature electrocautery. Again, the main profunda artery was preserved.
The proximal superficial femoral artery was clamped and transected, and the mass was taken off the field and sent for pathology. The reverse saphenous vein was brought to the field, and the proximal end was spatulated, as well as the stump, the superficial femoral artery. An end-to-end -end anastomosis was performed with a running proline suture. The bypass was pressurized to check for leaks and to ensure appropriate length of the bypass. The bypass was cut to length. The superficial femoral artery was reclamped and the distal anastomosis was performed in a similar manner. Once completed, the clamps were removed and there was noted to be good flow in the bypass. Next, we inspected the femoral vein ligation and noted stenosis of the femoral vein confluence. We therefore elected to patch the area of stenosis with remaining harvested saphenous vein. We felt this was necessary given this was the patient's primary venous outflow of the right lower extremity. Following the reconstruction of the femoral vessels, our plastic surgery colleagues were consulted for intraoperative muscle coverage of the wound. A rectus femoris flap was performed. The sartorius muscle is already partially resected with the mass and therefore access to the rectus femoris was convenient. Normally, the sartorius muscle is retracted medially. The areolar plane is identified and the medial edge of the muscle is bluntly dissected. The pedicle arising from the lateral circumflex femoral artery is identified and preserved. The muscle is mobilized on the lateral edge as well. The rectus femoris muscle is mobilized as far distal as possible and transected. The muscle is retroflexed into the dead space and over the femoral vessel reconstruction. The muscle is fixed to place with interrupted absorbable sutures. Next, the drain is placed and the wound is closed in layers, closing the fascia, deep dermis, and the skin.